Hey guys, thanks for joining us again for another edition of All Things Meta. I am, of course, Jimmy T. Yarn, and as always, joined by Alana Seas and Samantha Maybe. And we figured that lightsabers just weren't complex enough. So we decided to go on the clear other side of the cosmos. And we have decided that we're going to discuss time travel. And not just time travel, because if you start there, this, this podcast would just become a mini-series, which would go on to nine seasons, and you guys get bored. So to whittle it down, we're going to discuss the moral and social implications of time travel. As far as if if it existed, how you know could you place boundaries on it? Could you regulate it? And even if you could, what are the implications of that in society as well as ethics, morality, and you know, and then some other things? Basically, is what we're going to discuss. So, um, I think the format we did last time worked pretty well, where we kind of established our boundaries of of how far we're willing to take it. Uh, Sam, you had said that uh, when we talk about time travel, you know, the whole causality thing, there's that possibility of creating uh, divergent and parallel dimensions as far as alternate mm -hmm. realities and so forth. Um, you just don't want to stick with leaving those out of it because it'll get too complicated. Um, for now, I think we should just stick to saying if you do this, then it may happen. But okay. not not discussing like the uh, the implications of you know the jumping yep. between dimensions and what that could possibly mean. Just saying, right. yeah, if you mess with time, you might create some parallel dimensions. But we don't have to talk <laughs> right. about what traveling between them could actually mean yet. Right. So yeah. So primarily, yet. we're going to discuss one timeline and and keep it as linear as one can when talking about time travel. Um, yeah. So again, I, I think we'll stick with modern day. You know, time travel suddenly exists. Um, you know, for the sake of argument, we'll say that it came out in the mid '80s. I see Jeff Goldblum's Doctor Brundle uh, character came up with time travel. Ah. He didn't botch it up, and <laughs> and that the it's been perfected since then into something that is is of practical use. It's a means of um, well, actually, there's a question right there. Like, what is the practical application of time travel in our society? Just without the the regulation, because this will lead right into that, I think. But what could you use it for? Like, what could it be used for? It, it, as far as a practical thing that's just designed to be a tool. Practically, without I worrying think... about the ethics to begin with? We'll get there. Yeah, yeah. So without yeah. worrying about the ethics... I feel like, I mean, I, I feel like time travel for a practical use is a way for us to just save on time. I mean, not actually save on time, but I mean, I could get done, you know, what I would, what would normally take me a month to finish in the space of a few hours if I just keep going back and going back and going back. I might run into other me's, which, you know, we won't discuss the paradox of that, but you know, I could be multitasking or just be like, all right, um, so I'm going to go and back three hours so I can finish what we were doing and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, it just, it seems like I know I would use it to catch up on sleep at the very least. Hmm. Interesting. Sam, what, 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 what do you think it could be used for? I think one of the best practical applications of time travel is education. Honestly. Really? Because, think about it, what, what better history lesson can you have than actually going back to watch the trial of Socrates? Like, mm. actually being able to go and see something without reading a potentially biased history book would be amazing. <laughs> um, so if, if you had the means to do that every day you had a history class, like, everyone in the world would want to be a history major... Number one, you you know, you'd get to have a license to use a time machine, which who wouldn't want that? And you just get to bounce around all of recorded and yet to be recorded history. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Um, here's something so you brought <laughs> up education. Um what about literally skipping grade? Let's say that someone tests at seventh grade level when they're in the fourth grade. And rather than just put them in 
with people that, you know, just putting them in seventh grade, why not allow them to travel forward in time to when their friends are in seventh grade? So they would potentially keep their same circle of friends, but then you have the whole thing of, well, they've missed out in the last two years or whatever. Yeah. Um, I feel like that would be a choice thing because I, I feel like, I don't know that I would want to miss out on three years of my friends' lives, you know? Yeah, but the thing is, when you're in elementary school, what are you really going to miss? <laughs> For, like example, like the biggest thing that happened between point. my fourth grade year and seventh grade year was New Coke, and we all tried to forget it. Um, and yeah, I did have my first girlfriend in second, in uh, sixth grade. It was, so yeah, you know. I mean, my grandmother died when I was in sixth grade. I'd hate to have missed that. You know, in the last two years I had with her. So I feel like but, I. Feel but like, you could go back, but as soon as you found that, I'd be like, oh, I gotta go back, Zip, and then come back. All right, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late, which is impossible now, huh? You know. Right. Um. So, so I mean, right away, we're we're seeing all these very moral, big moral implications of of just basic time travel. I mean, so you even implied, Sam, that there there would be a license for time travel, like not just any, you know, Joe Schmo would be able to use it. Oh, of um, course not. <laughs> it wouldn't be like the suicide booths in Futurama, where you're like, Insert right. <laughs> Choose method of death, you know. <laughs> Insert quarter. Where, when when would you like to go, you know? Um, and because it is, you know, it's a like you know a motor vehicle. You'd you'd probably want to make sure that people weren't time traveling while intoxicated, and they are qualified to operate. Like they'd have to have an operator's license. Like they know how to use it. So it's not just like let's just punch the buttons and let's see what happens. Click, you know, and no. Um, and you'd have to, you know, you, they'd have to know what they're doing. So you'd probably need to make sure that a, they know how to operate the thing. They understand the possible consequences metaphysically of what they're doing. Yeah. And you'd want to regulate what it could be used for. You know, what would a government or governing body, okay, what, what would they want you to stay away from? Like, what would they forbid you from doing? Area 51. <laughs> huh? Like going uh, back in time to Roswell and, and figuring yeah. out the shit? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to watch it. I, I think that the biggest question in terms of that kind of regulation is whether or not you are allowed to change the future. You know, to, ch to go back and change the past and therefore change the future. I, I wonder whether or not anyone would be given a license to time travel, period, unless we had some way to, first of all, cloak or costume yourself to avoid being recognized, and a way to uh, eliminate affecting the world around you. Well, I, I think just based on the educational and the scientific applications of it, I think we're going back to the lightsaber thing where it's like, I highly doubt that under any circumstances, if possible, that they would make it uh, a consumer-based product. Like I oh, yeah, really, no, I, yeah. Like I just don't think that would ever be allowed to happen. This would be worse than marijuana legalization in terms of, uh, <laughs> you know, well, I, hey man, everyone does it. Uh, we'll I go back to 1835 and pick. Hmm. We'll disrupt, disrupt the whole time frame of the universe. No big deal. Yeah, Which, I mean, like, you will, no matter what, because even yeah. if there is a way for you to wear the exact same clothes and, you know, seemingly blend in, your very presence there is going to change the world around you. No matter what you do, or who you do or do not talk to, you will change things. There's nothing you can do to avoid that. Right, just by the, the fact that you're displacing molecules of air that wouldn't be yeah. displaced. You know, the whole the butterfly effect not nonsense. Um, and even if you were able to come up with some kind of, you know, interphasic stasis field where you were in a non-event mass with a quantum probability of zero while you yeah. were there, it was like, you're just there to observe, so I totally get it. But then if you've got to go to all that trouble and you have time travel technology... Mm -hmm. 
why not just use it to observe rather than actually participate? And and these would be the questions that they'd have. Like they'd be like, well, why don't we do this? Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? Um, what qualifies as observing. I mean, even just by being there, you have germs on your body that well, do I'm, not exist. You know, well, I'm saying, what if they had the technology to dial in a time stream and literally just view it like on a television? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see, I see. Like, like window to the world kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I can see that being something that would be okay as long as it could be proven on a small scale that it would not affect anything. But then how do you prove that? Because the second you change something, it's changed and no one's the wiser. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like you could, there's no way to regulate that. There's no way to regulate. Well, you can't change anything. I have a mustache now. <laughs> it, you know, it's just, Yeah, there's no way to enforce that. No, it's absolutely impossible to enforce. Um, it, it's just not something that... Uh, like because of the very nature of what it is, and we're talking about one of the basic, the, the the most basic ideas surrounding our our universe. Like it, it's there's time and there's space. You know, it gets more complicated than that, but this is more elemental than elemental. And when you start messing with things that are of the most basic premise of existence in, as far as what we understand as reality, yeah. um, I cannot imagine in my mind a human being qualified to mess with it. Okay. It's fascinating. But I don't see it. I, I, I really... I, I don't think that there's any way to do it now. Yeah. Like I know you guys are, are both Dr. Who fans and I'm not as nearly as versed as you guys are, <laughs> but they do have, um, they do a lot of time travel and there is kind of a code of conduct, right? Uh, well, yes and no. <laughs> so, I mean, w- without getting into like the canon of Dr. Who, yeah. Kind of take that framework and walk me through like, like, how do they attempt to solve the problems that we're, that we're raising, the questions that we're raising? How do they answer them? Um, primarily on Gallifrey, any Time Lord is just given the rule that they're not really allowed to affect the goings-on of other peoples or planets. So, basically, like, what you're suggesting, they're supposed to be the constant observer and never meddle in other people's affairs. Mm-hmm. But, of course, that's all the Doctor does, which is why he becomes kind of an enemy of the Time Lords. But, yeah, that's that's kind of the their only big rule, is to not interfere and not try to rewrite time. But there's also this undercurrent that time can always be rewritten. Mm. So, the, the Doctor's all about creating multiple time streams. Right, so as far as so as far as they're concerned, they're like, don't ever do it, but if you do, there's kind of an undo button and that we can always get one of the timelines going the way it should, kind of thing. Um, yeah. And I, and I suppose when we're talking about one time stream, you know, that becomes impossible. Like, the, there's no such thing as Control Z if you're only dealing with one reality, right? Right. Yeah. Um, and- and they also don't describe time linearly in the Doctor Who universe. It is constantly a kind of bulbous mass of wibbly wobbly, wibbly wobbly, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. I mean, you know, yeah. and that's, and I, and I suppose if you want to look at time and space as we understand it, however, how little we understand it, I should say. Um, you know, if you look at the way Doctor Manhattan describes it, it is that it's not, right. it's not a, uh, it's not a constant at all. The concept of time is just, it's a way that humans have created to perceive its passage or their their place in the time stream. Yeah, uh, time itself that, is all theoretical. It's like it, numbers. Mm-hmm. It's math. It's simple. It's yeah. simple math, so that we can kind of. That we can measure existence. It's a measurement of existence. 
it's not necessarily a metaphysical force so much as a way of, of measuring things. Yeah. But and I'm sorry. The but, but the metaphysical side of it is that you know when we talk about causality versus perception of reality and all this other stuff, well, that's where you, you're you're affecting the state of existence, mm -hmm. but you're not necessarily affecting the measurement of time. You know, you're just yeah kind of jumping around. You know. And the interesting thing about it is that, I mean, time travel itself is amoral. You know, the, the only morality that is extended here is to the time traveler. And so the idea of, you know, oh, you can't, you can't change what's already happened. It's like, well, technically there's nothing inherently wrong with changing what has happened and remaking a future. And so kind of dissecting the morality of that is really difficult because we don't really have a, a baseline for like the way things are supposed to be. I think that we do. I think that like, if something's past, right, and if you change anything, you're not affecting yourself. You're making choices for others. It's a removal of choice. Mm. You're, you're affecting other people's ability to live their lives as they intend. That's a great distinction. Yeah. I like that. Because I, I, I think that that's what it's about. It's not. I, I think you're right that the act of changing a timeline in and of itself, not a, like if you're the only person in, in, that exists ever, and you want to change the timeline, nothing. No, it's no problem. I don't see an issue, yeah. at all. But that's not mm -hmm. reality. That's not the reality that we currently find ourselves inhabiting and perceiving. You go back in time. And you order a cheeseburger 10 minutes before I'm supposed to get somewhere. And, you, and it happens to be the last cheeseburger. Well, now I go hungry <laughs> for a couple hours. And because I'm, I'm, I was supposed to eat at that point, And any number of things could go wrong just by me not having eaten that cheeseburger. Maybe I'm supposed to take medication with food. And I don't get to, to eat the food. And I take the medication and then it makes me ill, and I take an antacid, and it interacts with my medication, and I have, like, my spleen bursts or something like that, which then causes me to get into a hospital bed. And I'm not hurt or anything, but I take up a hospital bed in urgent care that someone who has a gunshot wound doesn't get to, and they die because you wanted a fucking cheeseburger. <laughs> yep. And I didn't, and I really wanted that cheeseburger. You took the choice of the cheeseburger away, and then someone died. Think about that next time you're eating. <laughs> yeah, but let me ask you this. So if someone from that proper time had taken that cheeseburger that you had planned to eat and the same, you know, process of events occurred, it wouldn't be wrong because it wasn't something that they meant to do. So what I, what I wonder is at what point does time travel make you responsible for the fate of others? In the second that you engage in it because you're changing, you're taking responsibility for changing reality it, once you do it. Yeah, uh, but aren't we constantly changing reality by every choice we make? So what, I, what I'm wondering is what makes displacing yourself in time wrong? Well, I think that, that it, it boils down to this. If, if you come into a room with me, mm -hmm. you know, just regular old linear time, right? Mm -hmm. Um if something you're doing is harshing my vibe or making me not happy with where I want to do with things, I can choose to not associate with you and get away from you or whatever. And by inserting yourself into a time that you're from a, ca a causal standpoint, causality being like, you're not supposed to be there at that level of experience in time, whether it's 10 minutes ago or 10 years ago, right? you're not supposed to be there as far as what has already passed, the reality we understand to exist. You know, the things that we measure ourselves by in our past, that already has existed. You have now inserted yourself into that and removed all those around you, their, their choice to be or not be affected by you. But, but if we run into the issue of... You say that, you know, oh, real you're changing reality. But if we are accepting a reality in which time travel exists, then who is to say that you are not supposed to be in any time at all? 
Like, like, where, wh- where's, where's this law that says you are not supposed to be here? You don't belong in this time. You can't be in that time, and you're breaking a rule by going to that time. If we're in a reality where time travel exists, at what point, like, like, what, what, where's the definition that says? it is wrong to affect another time because you're not changing reality because you live well, in a reality. Well, I, I would say that if we're in a reality that time travel exists, that this conversation would have come up and they would have created some sort of rule not too different from the Hooniverse where it's like, look, just don't fuck with people and you're good. You know? Um, but I also know that if we just had time travel, we mm-hmm. wouldn't immediately have the means to... To, to remove that influence, like, like I was joking about the, you know, being a, uh, having a, a quantum mass of zero and, you know, and, and like not having any probability whatsoever, like just being a non-event mass, right? In mm-hmm. other words, like you're there, but you're not there and you don't affect mm-hmm. anything. And if you could do that, you can time travel all fucking day, I don't care because you're not doing yeah. anything. You know, as long as you can't affect or change anything or anybody, because that's affecting free will, it, it's a bitch. Um, free will. <laughs> but I, I think that ultimately it's just a matter of, uh, you know, because there's all there's so many facets of it. I mean, we're talking about uh, potential privacy issues. Um, yeah, but those issues aren't different from me being born in, in this time and somebody else not being here in this time. Like anything that I do to you personally could be done by anyone else regardless of the time they're from. If I walk right. into the room with you, I'm affecting you in, the, in, you know, maybe not exactly the same way, but I am affecting you in the same manner that somebody else from a different time would come into a room. And affect- right, but guess what? If you go back 10 minutes in time or an hour, we'll just say a week, right? You go back a week in time and go into a room and talk to somebody, you're affecting the person that, there's, that they have already become a week later without their choice in the matter. You and may it's just not the be fact that you have so much then. foreknowledge of it too. It's, it's so just the, the fact that you have what, the f- that that could be a, that, that could be a part of no, it. Like it, if, it definitely does affect it because if you're going through life and you're with a person in a room, yeah, you can change what their future may potentially be. But if you then go back ten years in the past and sit in the same room with that same person, if you know what was going to happen to them ten years later in that same room. You can, like, plan ideas in their head or, you know, even if you don't do anything necessarily, you have foreknowledge. You know about their future. You know about their past. That's different from just sitting in a room with someone not having any idea what may transpire. And, and I agree with that. I agree that, that love, the level of, like, the degree that you're affecting them is different, possibly more severe. But I want to know what makes that wrong. Like, at what point have we made the decision that there's something wrong morally with that? The removal of choice. The removal of personal choice. But where is the removal of choice different from when somebody from your time harms you? Well, like, it's it's, it's the same. It's the same level. It is is not at all. No, it's not. Because because you're affecting way more things because of the butterfly and the ripple effect. It's not a direct causality. You are effectively changing thousands if not millions of 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 realities at that point within yeah, that time action, stream alone if any action that i have in this time does that as well we just don't know about it so correct the, but the thing is is that wrong? that okay is the difference is between okay if right now reality is a constant blank sheet of paper and you're drawing pencil lines as you go uh-huh. okay and yes you can do things that are horrific with that pencil you can draw ugly things that will affect people and pe- you will diverge from people based on that. However, what you're proposing is going back in time, ba- you know, further back on the paper to where everyone's made their drawings. And you just had a lighter to it and said, let's start over. And you don't get a choice in the matter. You cannot sit there and tell me it's the same fucking thing because it isn't. I don't know. I don't I don't see how it's more wrong on on that end. I, I don't. I, I, I don't understand. Because people don't because have a choice in what you're doing at it's all. because and you're the one holding the lighter. I know, but you could... You, I don't know. I feel like that metaphor isn't accurate. Because you could... You could shoot somebody in this time who was going to grow up to be president. And you didn't know. 
But if you knew they were going to grow up to be president and you shot them, it, it doesn't change anything. You still committed the same crime, right? But if you, if you didn't do something mean, if you gave a lollipop to somebody when they were young and they were going to grow up to be president, you didn't know that they thought, man, this person gave me a lollipop and it changed my life. But if you did know and you gave them a lollipop, that's wrong. Like, I don't understand where the distinction is made that the foreknowledge is what makes it wrong. I think it's just I think, a, I think ahead, it's Sam. I think it's entirely cons- it's a matter of consequence as well because you're like pointing out two really specific examples of where it's wrong and where it's not so wrong and you can't really do that either because there are some cases where you can go back and change something and maybe nothing bad happens but in the event that you do go back and you change someone's future in a completely negative way that never would have happened if you hadn't gone back in time in that situation, it is morally wrong. But there are cases where it could be either or. It's not mm. black and white. Right, and, and I'm also saying that going back and doing good things is just as reprehensible. Because you're not just... If, if you're doing, if you're committing one act, you're not just affecting that person. You're affecting everything else you touched and did while you were there. Mm-hmm. And the people that exist... And we're talking mainly about going back in time at this point, I think. Yeah. Uh, so... By going back in time an hour ago, you're affecting me now. And I have no choice in the matter whatsoever. Like, if you pull a gun on me right now, I have at least the, the opportunity to try and duck. You know what I mean? Like, I can see it coming on some level, but you've completely erased. Like, let's say that... Um, you know, again, I, I understand what you're saying that right now you could, like you could in, do something in, that would would cause me not to make my next video or something, and now and then that could be wrong. Mm-hmm. But if it's already happened, right? What it makes it more wrong because you've taken that away retroactively. You've erased it. You know, erasing possibilities. That's that's a daily moral thing you have to deal with anyway. Now you're stacking on top of that the possibilities of taking away people's achievements and effort and the life that they built on, on whether it's the tiniest level or the largest, most effective level of, of ending that life, you're changing those things. You're taking it away after they've already done that or haven't done that. Even if it's for the greater good, like if you killed Hitler, you know, that wouldn't necessarily be a good thing in the grand scheme of things. We don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that it's more wrong because you're doing more, more. You have the, you're affecting things on a much grander scale, anything you do. See, I would agree that you know more, but I don't think that you are doing more. I think that you're doing the same thing. You just know more. And while I completely agree with the perspective, like, I don't want anyone coming back in time, period. I don't want anybody messing with anything that already exists. But, like, purely from the definitive standpoint, like, there's really, there's nothing that fundamentally, philosophically makes it different besides the foreknowledge. And the foreknowledge itself is amoral. So, although I agree, you you know more. I don't I can't find the justification for it actually doing more. Well, I I think it, it's wrong. kind of like if you were to you know, taking time travel out of the equation, okay, just to kind of look at it as a comparative model, okay. Someone is going to build a house. Their desire is to build a house, and in the present mm-hmm. day time, um, for whatever reason, something you do prevents them from building that house, mm-hmm. and that could be potentially a bad or wrong thing. All right. Let's say they build a house. They build the house. And then by direct mission of action, of, of intent, of doing something else, no matter what the intent was, that house is destroyed. And you've destroyed everything they own, everything they worked for. See, but that's I think I think that that's a, a much worse thing because you're, you're just not just destroying the house. You're destroying oh, and their was... memories and, and, and stuff. If you destroy the house, they've lost something. But if you go back in time and the house has never been built, they've not lost anything because it never happened. But but that's the thing is it's wrong for you to arbitrarily make that unhappen. Yeah, I think where the, the distinction, 
I think the distinction lies is that, yes, for the people whose lives you are changing in the future, you are not doing anything different in the sense that if you just happen to be there and just happen to do the same things that you did after you go back in time, their life could end up the same way. It's different for the person who's traveling in time because their morality is in, is compromised more so than it would be if you just if you just did it purely out of circumstance. But if then it's just relative. No, it's not because for a person who's traveling in time, it's a decision that they make. Like it's yeah, it's relative, but like if you do it prior to time traveling, it's you don't really have a choice. You can't say I know the outcome of this decision, so I'm not going to do it. You, because you don't have the foreknowledge, you can't say if it's a moral or amoral thing to go make yourself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But mm -hmm. Something that simple could end up destroying someone's life. And if you have that knowledge and you decide, I'm going to go back in time and make that damn peanut butter and jelly sandwich and make sure this guy's house is never built, like, <laughs> that is a moral <laughs> decision that you're making. And so for the person whose life you're, whose life you're changing... To them, it seem it would seem no different, but to you, it is. So, unless you make the argument that morality decisions you make for yourself don't matter, it it, it is different. <laughs> I I think that I wouldn't make I wouldn't make the statement that morality does not matter, but I would say that there's a level of it mattering that we instinctively don't acknowledge that is already there. Like this issue that we have with how much you affect another person's life is already there. And because we don't deal with the, with the question of foreknowledge, we don't have to pay much attention to it. But because we, when we accept time travel as a facet of our reality, suddenly we're forced to recognize it. And so I don't, I don't know that I, I, I still don't think I agree with you, but um, but I see what you mean. I'm because confused because you're you're basically saying that we can't accept the fact that we in in that we influence other people's lives based on foreknowledge. So, like, you're basically saying that we can't say that it's more amoral to travel back in time because we can't travel back in time. She's basically saying that people mistreat each other in the present. So, what the fuck does it matter anymore if I go back and change yeah. things? <laughs> <laughs> that that but that in itself is an amoral thought to me. It's like you're you're saying that people don't take responsibility now. So if I take responsibility and do something the way I want to do it, that's just fine because people are shitty anyway. Well, no, potentially. no, that's not what I'm saying because you're. That's you're, what it sounds like, though. Well, you're assuming in, in the context is I want to do something inherently wrong, but like no, Jimmy, not, not, not necessarily. Yeah. I, I like, don't mean to imply that 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 your your intent in time traveling is bad. I think that that is a moot point for the moral discussion. I think it is irrelevant whether you intend to do wrong or right when you go back in time. What I'm attempting to say and what I think Sam's attempting to say as well is that the simple act of affecting someone's past and much more their future for any reason is in and of itself the problem. Well, I, I mean... I would agree with that. I would agree that time travel itself is, I guess I would say that the act of time traveling, like to be a time traveler, is a wrong thing to do because there's no way that you're not going to be able to affect somebody. But what I struggle with is the idea of you affecting somebody even if it's something if it's not something that you were you know intending to be wrong i don't understand how going back and making a peanut butter jelly sandwich in the past if you, if you didn't know what was if you know even even if you know that um if you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich uh you're not going to eat this burger that somebody else ate you know and maybe maybe you were supposed to eat that burger like the thing is you you can't say what you were supposed to do or what was supposed to happen in a reality where time travel exists, because in a reality where time travel exists, there's no way to say what it was meant to be. In a reality where time travel exists, the time travel itself enables reality to be re rewritten over and over and over again, so that there's no way you can say you have taken from someone or somebody has lost something by rewriting or rewriting and rewriting the past and future. Every time that it's done, it's exactly what's happening. So, there, you know, from my standpoint, it is wrong. 
Just because you know, just because the ability to do something exists doesn't excuse your morality. Just by know. you know, just by virtue that, that. that firearms exist. If all the firearms in the world, this will never happen. But yeah, let's but say that all deadly weapons are in a locker somewhere. Okay, that doesn't affect the morality of whether or not if you shoot someone. You know, having just them the existence of a gun doesn't change the morality of shooting someone being right or wrong or the uh, what the effect of shooting a gun has it's it it does become a matter that's why i wanted to t- discuss regulation at the beginning because who has access and what is being done with it is at the heart of the matter because if everyone could just willy-nilly time travel whenever they want then yeah the social morality is going to change but i think I would hope that we agree that that's not, at least it shouldn't be the case because that's exactly the, the, the problem that you run into well, because it could be rewritten over and over and over and over and over and over. Yeah, but we have this idea of the way things are supposed to be. I would submit that in a reality where time travel exists, there's no, there's no fate. There's no, this is how it was supposed to be. Uh, well, I, I would say we, I don't think that any of us said that there was a, uh, that your that fate was the problem. It's that, whether or not it was a destined thing, the fact is it did happen for whatever reason. And going back and changing it is taking on a responsibility that no person should feel uh, justified in doing. Because whether it's the very first time someone time traveled or the millionth time, I don't think that it diminishes the moral implication any less. Simply, just by virtue of, of time travel existing, he doesn't just excuse you from doing something that I feel is wrong. And to go back to the idea of there being a correct timeline, if we are going to stick to looking at things linearly, even if that correct timeline only exists for the microsecond in which you make a decision, it still exists. If it's linear. Which mm-hmm. I personally don't think it is, but <laughs> right, it, right. Yeah. Because if we start going into multiverses, because you go bring in multiverse theory, and my right. argument goes out the window because that right. the other realities <laughs> exist. They exist, and I'm fine. But the reason I'm getting upset is because, as far as where this conversation is concerned, this is the only go round we get. And damn you yeah. for you know saying that. Well, it's fine. You know, I, no, it's not. You know, <laughs> that's just what I'm saying. It's like, no, you can't do it. That was my cheeseburger. And as of the millisecond before you time traveled, that was my cheeseburger. And you took my cheeseburger. You're stealing yeah. from me. You know, you're stealing the experience. You're stealing the, you know, it, it's it's theft. It, it's theft. Well, yeah, of no, I agree experience. that stealing your cheeseburger is wrong. But I think I, I would I would stick to the to my belief that. Although stealing your cheeseburger is wrong, stealing it now or stealing or my future self stealing it from you now is the same level of wrong. No, because you're stealing more than the cheeseburger. You're stealing the life experience that I had as a result of the causality. You're stealing all my causality after that. I would disagree, though. I would disagree that I'm not stealing more than the cheeseburger because what the way that I affect you now and the way that I affect you if I were from the future is no different despite the foreknowledge. See, I think I would... part of the disagreement, too, is that Jimmy and I may be automatically assuming that you know what's going to happen as a result of you stealing the cheeseburger. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you're operating under the assumption that you are just doing another random act that you would do in the present or in the past and have no knowledge of what it will, how it will affect Jimmy or not. Mm. Which I, 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 seems I like think you keep bringing up killing Hitler. If all you know, st- if stupid, stupid somebody decided to go back into the past and be like, you know what, I'm going to kill Hitler, and then all these bad things won't have happened because they're stupid. You know, they're they're not going to realize that they're affecting way more than just that, and likely, uh, who who knows what could happen? It could be a trillion times worse if something else happened. You, you have no idea. It, it, but yeah. that's not something that you know. That they can be, I, I don't believe that's something they can be held responsible for because they don't have the this like you know extensive foreknowledge of everything that would have happened if but, Hitler had died. Well, you know, and, and, but you could, you, but that's the thing is that they made the decision, they made the choice to go back and do it. Therefore, everything that happened as a result of that is their responsibility. It yeah, falls on their shoulders. How it's, how Whether you knew what was going to happen or not. Like, if you had no foreknowledge of anything beyond, well, I know I'm going to go back and kill Hitler, and I don't care what happens, that's a problem. 
And it's the same problem, although a degree, if you take the cheeseburger, whether you know me or know what's going to happen. Because the fact is, is that in this linear, only one existing timeline, you're you're not just killing Hitler. You're not just taking a cheeseburger. You're robbing life experience that up until the moment you decided to get in that time machine existed. It's a level of reality theft that I can't even fathom. But what I'm saying is I think that you are always responsible and always guilty of that. Right, but I think that, but I think that, right, but but what I'm saying is that, and I want to make it clear that what I'm saying is that I agree that the responsibility is the same responsibility with every choice you make. What I'm saying is that the second that you're going backwards in reality and effectively changing a myriad of things, then it's, it's, it's a higher level of responsibility because you are affecting more even without the foreknowledge because, you know, who – because, again, who is to say that, that – us recording this right now isn't going to affect something else I'm going to do later and things like that. That's, yeah, that's fine. But that's I'm a choice that you're making at that moment. Right. But if, if, um, if, if somebody else from the proper time killed Hitler just because, they would have the same responsibility and have that same responsibility on their shoulders that the time traveler had. I don't think that responsibility is just taken off your shoulders because you're from this time. I would submit that that responsibility is always there. So there's nothing new that's being done. See, well, but that's the thing, though, is I think that's exactly the point, is that I think our idea of the of the weight of responsibility is reversed, where I'm saying it's a, if it's 10 tons right now, any choice I make is, is t- worth 10 tons. Mm-hmm. I'm saying going back in time adds another 100,000 tons. Of yeah, work. I would disagree. I would say that it doesn't change. You're just saying because the possibility of changing reality exists that changing reality by going back in the past is no less a problem. The, yeah, um, it's the same responsibility is on your shoulders, and you could still affect hundreds of thousands of people with any decision you make. But you, you know what time you're from, I don't think changes the weight of that responsibility. You still have the weight of that responsibility, but it was always there. Um, That's what I would submit. Well, I'm, I'm simply saying that if you go back in time, there's no way to have a complete lack of foreknowledge because you at least know what happened in your space of reality in, in the hour to 10 years or whatever you went back in time, right? You mm-hmm. know that. So you have some degree of, of foreknowledge. It, it's another factor in the moral decision that you're going to make, whether it is as simple as knowing that you don't like ketchup and you didn't know that until an hour ago. You know what I mean? Whatever the case may be, you yourself have life experience that you're bringing into a situation and and your morality may be different from what it was an hour ago or whatever. You go back in time. And that is a type of foreknowledge that can affect, depending upon what you're doing when you're there, you know, um, it just affects, you know, because you're affecting not only the past, but also the reality you left behind. And that's and, fine. I agree with that. I agree the effect is there. But and I, I think that because it's already passed and it's something that up until you left was set in stone, I think that because it's, to me, if you look at it as a tangible thing, you know, this is a, a, a body of existence that it, that is there. And you arbitrarily going back and changing it to say that that's not that it's not more of a problem than uh, any decision you make now. I think that's very irresponsible. Mm. I I don't I don't think we're going to agree on this. <laughs> I, I I'm okay with that. Yeah, you know? me too. But I I just it it just it blows my mind um, in, in a really big bad way because. I know you probably do not intend to come off this way with with what you're saying, but mm-hmm. it sounds very nonchalant. It's like, well, it's the same thing. No, to me, it it, it at its most core level is not the same thing at all. Not in even practice. Close. I mean, of course, I don't want any of this to happen, but I'm saying by definition, I don't see the justification for considering it more wrong. And I understand that the effect is perhaps more severe. I, I completely agree with that. 
but I don't think that the moral severity increases. And if there is this, you know, reprehensible idea for what it means, then I would submit that we're neglecting to approach current day actions with that same, you know, disgust. I would say that disgust can't just apply to time travelers. It has to apply to current day actions. And if we don't apply it to current day actions, then I don't understand why it's applied to time traveling. Well, I'm saying that it does apply to both, but I think that when you add time travel that it gets worse. I mm-hmm. think that every choice you make, you should, you should have that responsibility in your head. Uh, but when you, when you go back and you change a reality just by virtue of being there, that I, I think that it, it, it begins to just snowball effect. It, it, it's exponential. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying that, that, it, that the responsibility fails to exist and then when you go back it exists. I'm saying it exists very much now and it gets worse in back. Because it sounds like you're assuming that I'm like, well, any choice you make, I don't know what's going to happen, so whatever choice I make is fine. I don't feel that way. I, I think that every choice you make is so unbelievably important to every life you touch or do not touch because that's an equally important thing. I, I have a, a huge thing about that, I, you know, personal responsibility. I just think that the potential for even uh, unintentional wrong is so much higher when you're talking about altering a reality that has already existed in a certain form up to a certain point. I think that that's what multiplies the effect. So I don't understand why that, that the, the exponential effect doesn't also apply to the morality of it because you understand that going into a time travel situation that this could really screw things up and how that shouldn't affect you morally also at a higher rate. I don't understand why that, why that wouldn't enter your mind. I don't know. I think that that the existence of time travel itself automatically makes, you know, pre-existing realities somewhat irrelevant. Like the idea of being once once you go back in time, it's not like it's it's not like I don't know, once you were there, as far as you or anyone else is concerned, whatever future you came from doesn't exist. You know, because now And that's a problem to me. <laughs> I, I I don't know why that's a problem. Personally, I mean, it's kind of an issue of instant gratification as well, because we're trying to say that the things that we do in the present, you know, if, if the things that we do in the present don't matter, why don't they matter? Well, it's because we don't know what they're going to lead to. But if you go in the past and change one little thing and go back to your present, you automatically know what it changed. And you can see that this is an action I did in the past that now I feel I must take responsibility for, or not, whatever your choice is. But in the present, when you're going through your life, you don't always see what the things you do affect right away. So you may not look back on your life and say, oh, that one little thing I did led to this. I have to take responsibility for that one little action. It's just not the way that you think about how you do things. You may feel remorse for something that occurs in your life, you might not think back about what one little thing led to it. Whereas if you look at a time travel situation, it may be easier to look back through the timeline and pinpoint what thing led to the ultimate horrible disaster that you now feel remorse for or not. Yeah. 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 That, that makes sense to me, but I, 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 I'm, I'm I'm not moved. (laughs) Apologies. Mm. I mean, I really think the the major issue here is that we're mixing up parallel dimensions and linear timelines when we don't realize we are. And we all just want this to be a discussion about parallel realities, and it's not. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the second you say that there are parallel realities, I say that's a totally different set of... Yeah, then then Alana and I are absolutely fine. Because, you know... The moment because then it doesn't matter. Because then it doesn't matter. Different yeah. realities are created. Right. There's, There's divergent re- right. tree everywhere. Divergent realities exist and time travel exists. Alana and I are bosom buddies because I don't have anything to worry about because I know that everything that changes will exist somewhere else. 
And there's 900 yeah. billion different me's in different realities right now. So. Right, and we're all having the same argument with one little thing being changed, one of them being that I have bunny ears, and I think that's awesome. Um, you know, one being that I'm wearing contacts instead of glasses. Right, it, or, or whatever. Um, I, I just think that, because uh, I do look at, because I, I guess, you know, for the sake of it being this linear timeline argument, which, again, I knew would, would spark some stuff, and that's part of why I did it. <laughs> little tip of the hat there, folks. Uh, I knew that I'd get upset because I... I oh, I, I didn't I, mean to upset you. No, I, I intended to get <laughs> upset because I knew that something was going to come up. I just didn't know what and to what extent. So I'm, I, I thought that was a thrilling uh, conversation. So I, I guess... The reason that I got fired up was really simple: is that I look around this room and I see a lifetime of accumulated memories, and and material possessions, and and you know my cats, which are part of my family, and the people that I'm closest to, and, and that includes you guys too. Uh, the thought that someone could arbitrarily go back in time and forever erase any part of my existence, the theft of my very identity, that's justify a homicide to me like i would murder someone that that went to do that i would just like no you are not doing this to me because i've worked very hard to be who i am and for better or for worse that's the life i've got and i'll deal with it you know to take that to propose to take that away on any level to somebody is just because you're taking away their identity and i can't for a moment condone that on any level and the implication that that's not any morally worse than just, hey, I'm in line first. I took your cheeseburger in the present. I don't, no, I don't see it at all. Um, and, and that's why I was upset because I was thinking about it, how it would affect me. It's a very American human thing to be selfish. Well, it would affect me, you know, and that's what it is. That's all any argument is really when we talk about morals. Like, how does this affect me? And how would it affect other people? And everyone gets all upset. But the second you say, Divergent and parallel universes and dimensions exist. Pfft, who cares? Because <laughs> because it's still there. It doesn't go away. Um, you know, uh, I, I think that's that's part of why to come kind of full circle is that the second you accept that divergent reality exists in a world where time travel exists, so even though time travel doesn't exist, I believe that divergent realities exist. Like every choice I make plays out i believe that um somewhere you know that there are you know billions of jimmies and sams and alanas and so forth and a bil billions of toms and troys oh my goodness um, <laughs> oh, you, dear know. Father. <laughs> um you know so knowing that but but I, even then it's like i've got this reality I, this is my little corner of reality and i take it pretty seriously it, it's it's my little ride you know, it's like Bill Hicks said, it's just a ride, but I'm going to get everything I can out of it, and that, and that's cool. Um, mm -hmm. But See, then, because then it could be a joy ride, though, with the time travel thing with Divergent Reality. Can you just kind of try everything, you know? Now, the question becomes, with at that point, if we're just going to drop Divergent Realities in it, which we could have a whole podcast about that. But just for the sake of this argument, we drop Divergent Realities in and everyone agrees. The question is... Do we then have the ability with the time travel device to choose which reality we're going to go back to? Or do, are we so. still staying in the same timeline? I would say no, but I think that's completely... I think that's, that's something that is pretty arbitrary in terms of determining. Like, you could say, oh yeah, for sure. And you could say, oh no, not at all. But there's no, really, there's no way to really know. <laughs> There is well, no I mean, like, <laughs> there is a way. There, no, that no, though, there really is no way you could ever know if you were in the exact same reality, because there right. could be something so minuscule that's different that you would just never find it. Yeah, and you'd still be in a different reality, but to, it yeah. it would functionally be the same, mm -hmm. but it could still technically be different. Right, where like all dust molecules, like like all dust particles in our universe are hexagonal. But in the divergent universe you just created, they're actually octagonal. Yeah. You know, right. Which is actually kind of a huge even, thing. But. Yeah, I mean, it could be something even more minuscule than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. Uh, 
you know, one little grain of sand moved. Yep. But it but ultimately didn't affect anything. It just happened to move and that was the only thing that changed. Yeah. So knowing that these issues exist, because I know that in, you know, any any government run society Mm-hmm. Uh, we would have people on both on on multiple sides of this discussion, absolutely, um, or whatever. How would this get regulated? Uh, our, and if we're talking, if Is we're now see? we've dropped divergent realities into it. Um, I don't know if not, we want to drop divergent realities in there. What's that? I, I don't know if we want to continue to include divergent realities because it completely changes the moral argument. Yeah. So yeah. how, how how would you regulate it? Well, I, I think that you would regulate access to, to time traveling technology first and foremost. You would just regulate access to it. You would restrict it. Who qualifies? And then, hmm. Who qualifies? Exactly. Question. You know, like what you, you have to define what it would be used for, and then by that, who would get to use it? And I would hope that in our society, that it would be used purely for scientific and educational purposes. They wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> They wouldn't want to do that, um, but you know, that, that, you know. But that's I, I think without getting into the debate of of who would get to use it, because if it were up to us, I think it would be that. But we all know that probably wouldn't be the case. Uh, but ultimately, they would have to rest- they would have to define what it would be used for. So they legislate that, and they legislate who has access based off that proposed use, and then. I would assume go through a battery of psychological and and uh, aptitude tests on you know the equipment and the understanding of causality and so on. That'd be my guess. And the first villain to gain access via the black market <laughs> can ruin everything. <laughs> well, the first scientist that goes in hungover could ruin everything. Oh, for sure. You know. You know. Um, you know, so well, I, I think we can all happened. agree that if if a if a time machine were to be built, that we have a little pack, we're just going to go destroy it. Because no, <laughs> no, no. But you know, can you regulate it? Yeah. As with anything else, you know, uh, uh, tiny little uh, hairs and uh, your skin cells is certain the way the they're uh, changed. That's that's chaos. You know that's and that's kind of what we were getting at too. Is that that just the idea of anything existing in in human human society? Uh, you invite chaos into it. There's no way to absolutely regulate anything. I don't think that's yeah. possible. I I almost think the only way to actually reg- regulate time travel mm-hmm. is to prohibit it from being invented. Like which, the, which arguably you couldn't even really do. Yeah, I mean, the only way you could do is if if anybody is like, "Hey, we're trying to research how to invent time travel," you'd be like, "Well, you're arrested." And you know? I'm gonna roll. It, yeah, you just roll up a newspaper and hit him on the head. No, yeah, don't do that. You know, that, that's really <laughs> the only way, only effective way to regulate time travel because once time travel exists, there's just no efficient way to enforce it, enforce Until- that kind of regulation. Until the day when everyone decides, up, oh, screw that, we're going to do it anyway, and then they come back in the past to when we've outlawed it and start making us all time travelers. Oh, true that. <laughs> right. And I think another thing, too. When time travel gets invented, it could be like it could be invented a bajillion years from now, and they could just go back in time and be like, we brought time travel, here's the technology. Right. But when it's invented is also hazy. Yeah, I, I think that until until such time as there's a way to effectively monitor all time streams and realities <laughs> there's no way they, right there's no way to regulate time travel because that's what it is it's basically a, a super highway of reality and trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions of realities um, it would take a computer bank the size of earth then plus Constantly working, you know, at, ter- at you know, thousand teraflops a second, just to keep up with what we currently have, and then realize that there's another trillion, you know, trillions upon trillions every millisecond. Mm-hmm. There's no way to do it. But if there were, if there were a way to monitor it reliably and keep track of it, well, then you could probably regulate it on mm-hmm. some level. But then again, what would be the point, really? Yeah. 
And then you run into, you're going to run on the other side of the ethical dilemma, you're going to run into the issue of things like minority report, where instead of criminal prosecution, we have criminal prevention and, you know, all, all of the potential issues therein. So it's just like, goodness gracious, it, it almost seems not worth investing time in trying to make it a reality because it's only going to screw up everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. At least is uh, at least until such time as and I hate to use that word in this in this discussion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At least until we come to a point where we no longer perceive reality and time as we do. As long as we're thinking linearly, there you know, there it's never going to match up because time travel is non-linear and we prefer to think of time as far as our perceptive our percepted reality as linear for the most part. Mhm. Um, as a society, anyway. Yeah. Uh, you know, because there's, you know, I've always had the theory that when you go back and think of a vivid memory, that on some metaphysical level that you are actually in that time period again. Oh, yeah. Like you're, that you're in that dimension again. I completely that, agree with that. Yeah. So. To an extent. So, right. It, it's a very <laughs> vague, very simplified version of the theory, but. At uh, least in terms of your sensory perception, I agree with it. Yeah. Right. Exactly, and that's, and that's yeah. my point. The way you perceive things is different. So if we look, if we as a society and as a species learn or d- accept to perceive reality in a nonlinear way, time and space, uh, well, then the whole morality changes because then it's like, well, shit, it doesn't matter. You know, and, and but then you all risk turning into big blue guys with floppy dicks going. Ah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Would that really be the worst thing? Would it? Um, I wouldn't. Wa- I wouldn't want to imagine you as a big blue man with a floppy dick, Sam. That, that would oh, kind of be a, oh. one of the worst things. I'm. I'm just saying. Even in that universe, Sam would still be short. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be a short blue man with a floppy dick. <laughs> You wouldn't be able well, to do your hair all cute either, because you wouldn't have no, any. I wouldn't have any. Oh, that would suck. That'd be a sad. Yeah. Uh. uh. And, and we're not even going to the port part where you know genitals swap completely. Like I don't mind the glowing blue, and I don't mind the meh so much. It's everyone just being arbitrarily, you know, hey, you all have penises now. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't, I don't feel like that would necessarily that would be a rule, though. I mean, <laughs> well, I feel like it's kind of like the Matrix thing where he's just the projection of his ideal self and that's just what it happens to be. So I don't think everyone would automatically be masculine, but I don't know. <laughs> Right, right. Not everyone would have the meh. See, I thought you were going with the penis thing again. I was like, oh, wh- wait, what? You know? yeah, I was. I don't think, I don't <laughs> think everyone change. would have a penis. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I mean, I, I guess what I was trying to do was make myself pay for making a blanket statement. Which, <laughs> and, and believe me, it worked because that was some bad, that was some bad, Should bad you? red rope licorice. Okay. That's what that was. Um, so that's interesting. Uh Time travel. If it's linear, we we fight like cats and dogs. If we agree on divergent re- universes. We just say, well, fuck time travel anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Although, if you if you create a time stream in which someone's life is ruined, even if another time stream exists where their life is great, have you done something wrong? Because it's somewhere their their life is ruined. Hmm. So like the problem doesn't necessarily go away. It's easy. It's easier to dismiss, but it might not be completely dismissible. I mean, right. There's, but I mean, in, in that case, it is kind of hazy to me because yeah. there exist dimensions in which their life sucks because you ruined it, and dimensions in which their life sucks because they ruined it. Yeah. So exactly. I, I, I don't care as much about that because I don't know. I think you still have to take responsibility for it. I guess just because you're the, I mean, assuming that you know what, what end result your actions are going to have, if you don't, then I don't think it matters. Right. We're talking about causality with like knowing that every possibility will exist if you have foreknowledge of something, the effect, something you're going to do is doing, and that's a negative effect. Well, then bad on you. 
Yeah. You know, at, at that point, because every reality plays out, but that doesn't mean that the reality that you affect doesn't matter any more or less. If you're going in and being a bad person intentionally, you're still being a bad person intentionally. It's not like, oh, <laughs> screw it. Yeah. Uh, and it's the same thing, like unintentional manslaughter. It's the same kind of thing where it's still wrong, mm. but it's less wrong because you didn't know what you were doing. You know, it's when we talk about the linear where there's that one timeline, that one stream, and you're in just the act of going back in time to me right there, you're like, okay, you're already bad because you're affecting something that you have no right to affect. Yeah. But when everything's played out, then I think it's a much more even playing field and that basic morality is uh, parallel, congruent, equal weight. Like Alana and I agree 100% at that point with that argument where it's like it's the same moral choice no matter what because at that point everything's played out. To me, like like at that point, my argument dissolves into it's just the same moral argument. We're just happen to be talking about the past versus the future versus the present versus mm -hmm. reality, and that you know. So in that in that idea, right there, Alana and I are like like I said, bosom buddies. We're fine. It's just that when that it's just only one. You're like there can be only one. This is my last Twizzler. You know, this is my <laughs> Twizzler, and if you alter this Twizzler. Fuck you, you know. <laughs> this is my Twizzler. I've had this Twizzler since I was a child, you know. Um, yeah. Bad. Probably uh, bad by now. Hmm? If you've had that Twizzler since you were a child, it's probably bad by now. Uh, a little dry. A little dry. Ugh. A little dry. Just... You know, if you can't pronounce the damn ingredients, you probably shouldn't eat it in the first place when it's fresh. Just saying, folks. Uh, <laughs> Just, just throwing that out there for those of you that are at all health conscious, uh, and for those of you following my analogies and, and metaphors with uh, cheeseburgers and fast food, you shouldn't eat fast food ever in any reality, any dimension. It's bad, 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 bad news. Uh, On that note, let's go to In and Out. Oh, that's just me. Sorry. What? Oh, oh you don't know what In and Out is, Jimmy? Oh, it's a fast food place on the West Coast. I just, yeah. you, but you can't possibly say that without conjuring up two images, neither one of them that I want. <laughs> one of them is of a Van Halen song. It's not very good, and oh. the other, <laughs> and the other is just of some really creepy guy with like pudgy fingers making the, the fuck sign with his hands. You know, the finger and the fist. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. yeah so you so you don't get to say that around me. No, you don't. No. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, but that's just like, okay, and I, I, I realize that people are going to eat fast food, right? Um, that's fine. <laughs> completely off topic at this point. Right, which is fine. Well, it's still reality. We're still talking about timelines and how the choices <laughs> affect shit. It's we can on talk subject. about anything, and we're still talking about reality. That's right. We absolutely are. Like, you can't possibly get off this topic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know here. something I wanted to ask. Ooh. Hmm. Um, so... <laughs> we're talking about time travel in the literal sense of like being in a time machine and going back in time. Uh, what kind of time travel already exists today? Cause I would submit that when we, you know, make a podcast and then later you go back and fix something and post, that's a type of time travel, not like in you're the, affecting really the future. Sense. Huh? You're, you're, you're changing, you're changing the recorded event of something happening to affect someone's future perception of how it went down. Absolutely. Exactly. So, like, I wanted, I wanted to, like, just have us list different types of time travel that already exist. Hmm. Go. Well, any sort of editing of any kind, anywhere, any kind of revision of recorded anything, whether it's print, uh, video, audio, uh, files, data, you name it. Like, that is all some degree of time travel and reality alteration. Modern medicine and anti-aging creams. I think those are a type of time travel. If they work. Mm, yeah. Even if it's a minuscule amount, even if it's only a matter of minutes. Well, it, well, if we, for the sake of this question, if we are still accepting that as far as we're concerned, time is a perception of reality... Yeah. Then absolutely that is time travel because yeah. you're making someone who's seventy year old seventy years old look sixty. 
mm-hmm. you're affecting the reality of the people that walk by here every day. Yeah. For better or for worse. To live longer than they would have lived completely naturally. So you're, you're essentially projecting them into a future that they would not have met. <laughs> yeah, there's certainly that. <laughs> it, nice. it, air bubble. Nice. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, because of the lack of, I mean, you know, a lack of foreknowledge, do we really know they would have lived, they, they're they living longer than they would have? Just could we go off of what the census says well, the mean, average, you know, a, you know, lifespan is, da, 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 da. But assuming we know she'll live to be 70 and then this makes her 75, yeah, you're affecting, you're doing time travel, you're affecting reality, sure. Uh, what else? Um,. Uh, every form of acceleration and deceleration known to man is a yes. form of time travel. Yes. Mm-hmm. So much, much of our modern transportation. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, so again, because we're talking about time as a for those of you just joining us, you know, time is a perceived <laughs> just reality. Us, go back in time to the beginning of the podcast. Right. And- Rewind this shit. If you went to the bathroom and you missed the beginning of this, you're like, that's not fucking time travel. Yes, it is. Because time itself is defined as a perception of reality. Ha, ha, ha. Yes. So, yeah, I, I suppose anything that could conceivably affect um, how the passage of what we perceive as time is perceived. <laughs> Almost went cross-eyed there, but I caught it. Um, that would be considered a form of time travel in the most basic sense, because you're traveling through the perception of reality that we know is time. Right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So what else? What else affects that? Speed, decel- you know, speed changes. Uh, we talked about recordings. Uh, data of all types. We got that. Those are the big ones, I'm sure. Wow. That was actually a much easier question to answer than I thought. Yeah, me too. I'm trying to, th- I'm trying to think of some way to tie in, you know, look back time and astronomy, but I got nothing. Time and astronomy? Look back time? Like the fact that... All of the stars we see are just snapshots oh, of their past check. selves. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so anything that's, that is... Uh... So we are essentially seeing into the past because of mm-hmm. how long it takes those images to reach us and that light to reach us. We're essentially seeing the past of whatever stars we can see. So if you own a telescope, mm-hmm. you're a time traveler. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of, yeah. <laughs> just by virtue of that, your perception of time is different for the moment you put your eye up to that eyepiece. Telescope is a time machine. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That's going in the description right there. Um, <laughs> discuss the fact that telescopes are time machines. Seriously. You'll have to listen to find out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's kind of cool. So, yeah, I think we've kind of exhausted this one. Unless we want to, you know, keep going with the conversation about multiple divergent dimensions and then just make that something separate. Oh man, I don't. I think that that's a conversation. I don't know. I don't even think it's a conversation for another time. I feel like it. Kind, a lot of it kind of goes without saying. Yeah. Yeah. No way. Yeah. I feel like there's not much we would disagree on there. Yeah. Well, we don't have to disagree for it to be a stimulating conversation. No, but I mean, like, one person would explain their perspective, and we'd all be like, "Yeah." <coughs> yeah, we do kind of think alike when it comes to the defining metaphysics, which is good. It makes the the ground level of the discussion easier. But you know, you, you know, you could have a whole subject where it just says, "Okay, if we accept that divergent universes exist, does that change your moral obligation to be a good person?" <laughs> because then it's like, well, it doesn't matter. Because someone somewhere else is doing all the things that I'm doing wrong, right? It doesn't matter. You don't have to do the morally reprehensible things because there's already a you that exists that is doing them. Right. So you could be a dick, doesn't matter. Well, if you I got mean, to, and you we, still will be. <laughs> but if we accept that there are, you know, uh, multiple timelines, just because you have the capacity to do something does that that automatically mean that that timeline exists isn't it like if you if you made that decision 
then you've automat- automatically created a bunch of timelines. But it doesn't necessarily mean that somewhere there is a timeline where you made the wrong decision. No, that's kind of what that's that's what multiverse theory implies that you can pretty much conceive of any possible universe and it exists. Like there is a universe wherein dinosaurs still roam the planet and never died out. Like and there's there think is of the craziest universe. thing possible and it's real. Like there are there's a planet that the primary race is just giant eyeballs at rabbit ears and right. they do nothing but eat Snickers. Rappers, not the Snickers. They just create because the rappers. Because there are just so infinitely many possible universes that you cannot conceive of all of them. Well, well we could try. That's fine. You could try. <laughs> but I think, I think that that would be one idea. Because we have, you know, linear, which is one idea. Then we have multiverse theory, which is another. And in in the middle. I, I I think that there's worth it's worth like considering that perhaps there's you know a more tree like multiverse where it's if you made a decision you create the multiple timelines but they're just because you can conceive of a possible universe doesn't mean that it exists like like it I don't I don't see how that's metaphysically possible well I mean. I, I don't see it being plausible. If we're if we're even discussing multiverse theory, I think that it immediately jumps to you either got all of them or you got none of them. Yeah, because then you're you're limiting the constraints of the universe to the bounds of the human mind. Mm. And I just don't want to do that. Because you're you're essentially saying that only universes that we can potentially conceive of can exist, but only if you conceive of them. You can't you wouldn't be able to have a universe exist for a decision that you never thought to make. But in all probability, it, it, it does exist. Because of some strange situation you made five days ago that led you to a slightly different spot on the floor in that day that made you think of that one other universe that you hadn't thought of previously. Hmm. I just So I guess yeah. in, multiverse, in multiverse theory, free will does not exist. No, that's an interesting choice. It exists. Free will exists in every possible dimension, and then, it plays it plays out differently. You can choose anything you want in the real the the timeline you're in, the dimension you're in. So, but but what you're saying is that <clears throat> in some dimension somewhere, I have killed my sister. But it, yeah. it right, but it does not affect <laughs> but, but you. I would, but I would submit that. So I, it doesn't matter whether or not I want to kill my sister because the possibility exists. It does exist. And that's fine in multiverse, but I'm saying there's no other idea where there's an in-between where in all of my time streams, which there would be like, you know, a ton of them, but in all of my time streams, I, I, I would say that in all of them, my sister is either dead or alive, but in none of them have I killed her. But, 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 that, but with using that as an example... You're trying to tell me that they, it, 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 there's no probability whatsoever that a set of circumstances would exist where you would kill her. And I don't think that that's possible. I think that there, there's a possibility. Like, let's say that the worst – think of the worst possible thing a human being can do ever and you witness her doing that and it drives you to a point of rage that where you kill her. It's possible. doesn't make it right. Does it mean that I want yeah. that to happen or that I think that's a great thing with multiverse? I don't like that idea that there's there's a me out there that's a racist asshole. That, that sickens me, right? But <laughs> when we're talking about the, the science of it, that probability suggests that it does exist. No matter how hmm. repugnant it is, that the probability is that it exists. I find that interesting. I find it interesting that it has to be all or nothing. I don't. I don't. I don't disagree with the idea. I just say I find it interesting. I, I'm just saying that it in because you're looking at not just your choices, but the choices. And we're not just talking about choices either. We're talking about things that are that are, in, are inherently random. You know, wind gusts and so forth. Well, yeah, because then your, your concept of identity is completely skewed in a multiverse theory. Oh, yeah. Right? Because you know, Absolutely. You say there's such a thing as free will, but are you really you if you were born in March instead of January? You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I don't know. And that's why it's fun. It, it, it makes you feel smaller than the smallest of small, but that's kind of 
the point is, is to, you know, this is all we got. This is our perception of reality, and that's we, you know, have to take it seriously because that's what keeps us sane. You know, the second that we say, well, it doesn't matter, then everyone's insane and everything happens. But then there's another reality where we're still having this conversation going, we, ha- we are responsible. Then there's a podcast going on in an alternate reality where we're like, fuck everything, and then we both all agree to go out and destroy everything we see. <laughs> you know? Which is, again, oh repugnant God, but interesting. In reality, I'm married to Tony Stark. Yes. Because Tony Stark exists. Yes. In that reality, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. There's an alternate universe where I'm a really hot lesbian, and I'm really okay with that. It's just uh, like where there's an alternate reality where Santa Claus is real and has the ability to jump through dimensions so he could conceivably come into our dimension. So Santa Claus is real, guys. Yeah, and well, there's yeah, a, and there's a reality time travel. And there's a reality where uh, Godzilla is really a deity. Yeah. <laughs> and it's this one. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Yeah, so as you can tell, time travel is a many splendored thing, and there's no easy way to discuss it unless you start to put limitations on it, which we have decided you pretty much can't do, so you just shouldn't do it <laughs> ever, pretty much. Uh, so for that rule.com, I am Jimmy TR. I'm Alana Seeds. And I'm Samantha Maybe. Thanks for listening, guys. Take care. We'll see you next time. <laughs> or will we? <laughs> I like the way you violate the causality. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes.